secrets to playing pool. Find out why elevators give you that sinking feeling. And Shazam! Time for a trip to wizard school. I really wish I was magic. Don't you, Taran? Yeah, it would be pretty handy. <laughs> Maybe what we need is one of Lara's magic crystals. Ashley and I are crazy about crystals. Some people believe they have magical powers. I'm not so sure about that, but I do know they're really beautiful. Hey Ashley, I know how to make more crystals for our collection. Do you want to give it a go? Come on. We're going to start with a sugar crystal. Here's how you do it. Cut a piece of string about this long and tie it to the middle of a pencil. Thanks, Ashley. Now we tie a paper clip to the end of the string. There. Now wet the paper clip in the string and press them into some sugar. We want a nice sugary coating. Then hang the paper clip inside a tall glass like this. I'm pouring in water that has two whole cups of sugar dissolved in it. It dissolves best if you stir the sugar into a jug of warm water. Now you won't see much right away, but by tomorrow everything will be crystal clear. <laughs> Welcome to Zach's Wizard School. Time for today's lesson. <laughs> Whoa, it worked! Cool! Hey, these figures really are magic. <laughs> this is fun. <laughs> okay, time to make this tablecloth disappear. One, two. <laughs> nah, too risky. If my magic doesn't work, I'll smash Mum's dinner plates. What about something else? Yep, a bottle trick. I'll be right back. Okay. Now where did I put that other bottle? Ah, oh, here it is. I've got a bottle balancing trick for you. I just place my lucky banknote on top of this bottle and balance another bottle on top, like this. Now watch closely. One, two, three, shazam! The money just slides right out. It's magic. One of the top bottles is full of juice. This could get messy. I'd better move to the garden. Ready and shazam. Darn magic. Never works when you want it to. Okay, down on my magic carpet, I carefully pour some juice into a bottle, then place my banknote over the top and balance it on top of the other bottle. Here we go. Shazam! Yeah! Didn't spill a drop. An object that is not moving will stay at rest unless a force is acting upon it. The scientific name for this is inertia. Because there is very little friction between the fast-moving banknote and the necks of the two bottles, there's not enough force to make them move. Their inertia holds them in place. Now my magic is working, I'll try the tablecloth trick again. One, two... No, it's too risky that way. Shazam! That's more like it. What? How did I do that? <laughs> Oh, a good magician never reveals his secrets. Lara's about to reveal her crystal-making secrets, though. Let's go take a look. Ashley and I are having a crystal-making workshop. This one's going to be a sugar crystal. Now let's make some more. What about a salt crystal? We'll do the same as we did for the sugar crystal. But this time, let's make the paper clip into a diamond shape. Maybe our crystal will look like a real diamond. Now, put a stack of salt in this glass. Keep going. 
We need lots of salt. That should do it. Okay, a pinch more for good luck. Now fill the glass up with warm water at the tap and stir until all the salt is dissolved. In goes our diamond-shaped paper clip. This is fun. Now we have two crystals on the grow. Let's make one more. Again, we cut a length of string, tie it to the middle of a pencil, bend the paper clip into a fun shape and tie it to the other end of the string. There, I'm going for a triangle. This time we're making a crystal from borax cleaning powder. A few big spoons into warm water and stir until it's all dissolved. Let's add a dash of food colouring. A red crystal will look so cool. Now comes the hard part. Waiting for our crystals to form. <laughs> There's nothing quite so cool as being good at pool. Yes! That's two, three in a row. It's so easy to beat Giovanni. Listen up, Giovanni. I'm going to show you something that may just help your game. Let's say these coins are pool balls, right? Look what happens when one coin strikes the other. The coin doing the striking stops, and the second coin moves away. Pool balls do the same thing. Have got some more coins, Giovanni? Thanks. Here goes two coins hitting four. Yep, the first two stop, and the last two move away. So whatever goes into a hit, comes out the other end. When one coin hits another, it instantly transfers its energy to the next. If two coins are pushed into a group, the energy is transferred along the line and released in the same quantity. The speed at which the coins are flipped doesn't change the number of coins that move, only the distance they travel. Pool balls behave in exactly the same way. Let's see if Giovanni's learnt anything today. Yeah, nice shot! Hey, wait a minute! to help them that much. Looks like Giovanni has finally got his pool game all figured out. Meanwhile, John is busy doing some figuring out of his own. I live in an apartment on the 14th floor. I'm really glad there's a lift. I'd hate to use the stairs all the time. But every time I go up, it feels like something is weighing me down. There's that feeling. It's really weird. Hmm, curious. Let's try going down. Oh, yep, it's almost like I feel lighter. But I wonder if my weight really changes. I will just get the bathroom scales. Okay, that's my weight standing still. Let's see if it changes. Going down. I knew it! The scales say I'm lighter. Back to normal. Now, going up. Hmm, my weight increases. John's weight isn't really altering. It just appears to change because of the acceleration of the lift. John seems to weigh more when the lift is going up because the fast upward motion forces the scales harder against his feet. On the other hand, John seems lighter as the lift accelerates downwards because the scales move away from his feet. Well, that's what I call a weight of my mind. The boy said I can't play cricket because I'm a girl. That's just silly. I'll show them I'm just as good at catching as they are. And they'll have to let me play. Right. These coins will show just how well I can catch. It's simple. I bend my arm backwards towards me, flick my arm down and... Ta-da! What a catch! 
Now let's see how Zach goes. Okay, he's got them balanced on the elbow and... Whoops! Let's see what Fraser can do. He stacks them up and... Oh, it was a good try for a boy. Okay, now to show them I'm no one-hit wonder. What a catch! When we catch a ball or a stack of coins, we test our reflexes and reactions. Our eyes see the object and relay messages to the brain. The brain processes this information and tells your muscles where to aim your hand. It's called eye-hand coordination. Now to show them how it's really done. How's that? The safest hands on the field. Well done, Jade. Girls can do anything boys can. Yeah, I guess you're right, Dana. Time to check on two more clever girls and their crystals. It's time for Ashley and me to check on our crystals. Wow! Look how much they've grown overnight. That's the sugar. You can see the individual crystals forming on the paper clip. The borax crystal is looking good too. There's even a tinge of pink on it. Now the salt crystal. Hmm, the salt seems to like crystallising on the string, but not so much on the paper clip. Salt crystals form quickly on the rough texture of the string, but they take a few days to get started on the paperclip's smoother metal surface. But it takes millions of years for the Earth's minerals, like salt or carbon, to make a crystal. And some of them can be pretty tough. Crystals that grow from carbon can create a diamond, the hardest thing on Earth. So which one is our favourite? Sugar crystals, of course. Not only are they beautiful, they're also delicious. I think those diamonds were my favourite crystals. How long do you think they did? Quite a while, Dana. You've got plenty of time to go and try making one, though, because we've reached the end of the show. See, See you next time. time. <laughs>